Hello and welcome to the 6th Lion Mountain Studio video tutorial. Today we're going to leave the rhythm department and we're going to start to have a look at synthesizers and samplers and put some melodies into our songs. In this tutorial we'll be covering some really basic things like how to load a synthesizer or sampler into your set and then how to draw in or play in a melody using the computer keyboard, your mouse or a piano MIDI keyboard. The following few tutorials will cover the more in-depth things like a basic approach to music theory and then a basic approach to sound synthesis and making your own sounds from scratch. And here we are again inside Ableton Live. If we look here on the left inside the instruments folder in our little device browser area, uh, previously we've been looking for impulse and drum rack and all things rhythm there. Now we're going to be making melodies, our world is opening up and we can pretty much use any other thing in this list here. You can make melodies on analog, collision, inside electric you've got more synthesizers to work with, inside operator, sampler and simpler and also tension. So these are all tools that you could potentially use. Now you can approach making melody in one of three ways. Firstly, you could use a preset that somebody else has made. So you'll just drag one of these presets from inside these folders onto a MIDI track and play along. Presets are like ordering takeaway. It's like a sound or a bunch of sounds already prepared for you. The second way is you could build your own sound from scratch using a synthesizer or a sampler. And that's kind of like making a meal from raw ingredients. It takes skill and a bit of practice in the kitchen. Thirdly, you could find a preset that you like and then improve on it and modify it so it expresses your creative idea. This is a great approach because it means that you can save some time but still be creative. And that's what we were doing when we were looking at drum beats, taking a pre-recorded sample and then adding effects or filters to kind of pimp the sounds the way we wanted them to be. Since today is our first day with Melody, we're going to go with the first takeaway option and we're just going to use somebody else's preset. Note that next tutorial we'll go deeper into how synthesizers and samplers work and we'll look at modifying sounds as well as building them up from scratch, but today we're just going to get some notes down. So to find a preset you need to make sure that you're in this instruments folder and to get to the instruments folder you have to be inside the um, device browser. If you're in one of these other things you're probably browsing the wrong area. So let's get into the device browser and then in the instruments folder and then just keep on expanding these folders to find some presets that you like. I'm gonna maybe go for a sampler, some pianos and keys and I'll just drag this first one over, keys up and you can see there that as I drop it over the MIDI track, just like Impulse or Drum Rack, it'll um, rename the title of the MIDI track there so I know it's all happening. I'm just going to right click and rename that to something a bit more meaningful. My hot preset. Now like drums, you can enter notes in three ways. You can either draw them in and play them in using a computer keyboard or you can play them in using the piano MIDI keyboard. So let's just quickly go through those. You know pretty much how to do all of this technically. We're just going to look at it in the context of the synthesizer. So I'll just double click here to create an empty one bar clip. You can notice that on the left here there's a piano keyboard and that represents the, the pitch or how high or low the note is. So I want to draw in some really low notes because I want to make a bass line. So the easiest way to do that is just expand um, this window, hover over there until we get the little arrows and draw that up. And then we've got a bit more piano to deal with. You, when the, the arrow becomes a magnifying glass and it only happens in this little area of the window, you can drag that keyboard up and down and you can see C0, that's very low, and as we drag up you get to the higher notes. 
So I'll stay quite low with my baseline. I'll go down here to C0, I reckon. And um, I'll just be drawing these notes in like I do in the drum machine, just with a double click. And I can double click it and drag it along to make it a, a longer note. And you can see this here will be going up in pitch like a bomb, bomb, bomb. We can have a listen now. to the computer keyboard. To get the computer keyboard to work you only need to make sure that this little red record arm button is, is red, not grey, and that means that we're all set to go. Um, so just playing on these um, middle line of the computer keyboard should get you some notes. Now you can press the X key to raise octaves and get a higher pitch or you can press the Z key to lower the pitch that your, your keyboard is playing at. And once you've chosen the general notes that you want to work with, um, then just create an empty clip by double clicking. Let's chuck on the metronome so we're playing in time and um, let's go. And just like with drums, I can edit what I've played in by um, moving it around with the mouse and fixing things up that might have not been in time because of latency or lack of coordination. And working with the piano MIDI keyboard is just the same. You'll need to check that the record arm button is activated so you can hear it and then have a little play. You can choose your octave on the piano MIDI keyboard itself. It's usually a button that, uh, that looks like this one here. And you might have a few extra things like the modulation and, and pitch wheel to play with. But like usual, you just double click to create an empty clip and then press play to record in. So at some point in making these melodies, you, you might get a bit carried away and fair enough, you want to create a bit of a, a longer melody. When we double click these, um, these parts to make an empty clip, it defaults to a, to a one bar, one bar loop. That's four beats. And if we press play, we can see that um, four beats looping by the little circle animation here. To make a longer recording, you don't create an empty clip first. You just press record by clicking straight on one of these circles and then start playing in. So I'll just be playing in um, the melody as long as I want to. And the good thing is that I can sort of do it a few times and then um, it doesn't matter how many times I make a mistake because I can just keep on recording until I get it right. And the bad thing is that once I do finish, I'm going to have to try and find the bit that I like and, and do the editing of it, which can be a bit fiddly until you get used to it. So we'll just have a look at that. First, I want to get rid of some of this empty space. If I just press play now, it's, it's not a very fun loop. I have to listen for two bars of nothing. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, tell it where to loop from. Now, if I grab the corner of this of this loop here, I can drag it and whatever's yellow is is eventually what, what we loop. So that can be quite fun. You have to make sure that your, um, your mouse is right on the corner there and then you'll be able to drag it back and forth. I think I want it to start at three there. And then um, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bars. That's a great length. Let's make it eight bars long. Ah, so we notice now that the, the playhead's moved. Now that's quite important, that little triangle there. It's so important that when I put my mouse over it, my mouse becomes a triangle. You just drag that back to the start and that says start here. 
Most of the time you want it to start at the beginning, but sometimes you don't. We'd be able to kind of make it start on the second last bar to be a little bit wacky for whatever reason. Anyway, let's say that I actually wanted only a four bar loop. So I just drag that back to number seven. One, two, three, four bars long. And we can even, um, we can even give that a play and you'll see that it loops after four bars. So that's the very handy way to make longer melodies. In short, whether you're doing it with the mouse drawing in your melodies or you're doing it with the computer keyboard or the piano MIDI keyboard, it's technically very similar to how we've been making drum beats. You just load the instrument in and then you draw or you play in the stuff. The big difference is that instead of just choosing your sounds and the timing like you did with drums, now you have to choose the notes that you're going to play as well. And that kind of brings us to the end of this tutorial and into the next one, which is a brief introduction to musical theory, like notes and chords and all of that stuff. I'll see you there.